Today we're going to be talking about why people start to worry about their health and how health anxiety gets triggered. Hi everyone. In today's video, we're going to continue our series of videos on health anxiety, which is also known as hypochondriasis or illness anxiety disorder. And today's video is going to be focusing on two main factors that can trigger a person to start worrying excessively about their health. But before I get into that, just a couple of disclaimers to go over. I'm a registered psychologist in the province of British Columbia, Canada, and this video is for informational purposes only. It is not intended as a substitute or replacement for advice from your doctor or mental health professional. Now with those things out of the way, let's start talking more about health anxiety. Now, in previous videos, I talked about the various factors that can predispose or set up a person to develop health anxiety. It's almost like these factors create a dormant health anxiety within a person, lying just under the surface. And this dormant health anxiety doesn't cause any problems unless the person is exposed to something that triggers the health anxiety and causes them to start worrying excessively about their health. I've talked about how past experiences, like previous experiences with illness themselves, seeing a family member struggle with a health condition, or having a family member model health anxiety behavior, I've talked about how these can lead a person to feel more vulnerable with regards to their health. And what this can do is to increase how concerned a person is about their health and their health status, and they become extremely sensitive to any body sensations, changes, or symptoms. The person becomes hypersensitive to any signs of potential health risk or illness. So if a person has these factors that predisposes them to develop health anxiety, this dormant condition that lies under the surface until, it, until it's activated, that raises the question of, how exactly does health anxiety get triggered? What are some of the factors that can take this dormant health anxiety that's lying just under the surface and that isn't causing a person problems in their day-to-day -day life, and how can it become something like, like hypochondriasis, which causes huge amounts of distress, anxiety, and interference in a person's life? Now, to try to explain this, I want you to imagine asking a friend or family member whether they've ever worried about their health. What do you think they would say? Well, most people will acknowledge having some health-related concerns from time to time. Health is a common topic that people worry about. But for most people, the worries about their health come and go, just like other worries. Now, the interesting thing is, if you ask those same friends or family who don't experience health anxiety what factors might get them to start worrying about their health, those are probably going to be the same factors that would trigger an episode of health anxiety in someone with hypochondriasis. The difference is, for people who don't experience high levels of health anxiety, these triggers may start an episode of some worry about their health, but they eventually dismiss those worries and move on with whatever else they were doing. They move on with life. But for someone with health anxiety, these triggers get combined with inflexible and inaccurate health rules or assumptions that a person may have. Beliefs like uh, any bodily symptom or change needs to be taken seriously. Uh, I must not have any unusual physical symptoms in order to be healthy. I have to pay close attention to my health symptoms, otherwise I might miss something and that could kill me. Those types of beliefs, rules, and assumptions become activated and flare up to pour gasoline on this smolding health anxiety which just lies under the surface. So, in other words, for a person with health anxiety, they likely have had negative past experiences that lead to unhelpful beliefs, rules, and assumptions about their health. Uh, this is kind of like the stick of dynamite. So all it takes 
is that there's a little bit of a trigger or a match to ignite the dynamite and cause the health anxiety to blow up. And the thing is, this is all happening in the background. It's not that people are necessarily aware of this while it's happening. This isn't necessarily a conscious process. So that's how a person gets set up for these triggers to really affect them and cause the onset of an episode of health anxiety. But what exactly are these triggers? Well, there are two main types of triggers. There are internal triggers and there are external triggers. Internal triggers are things that happen within us. These internal triggers can be uh, any physical sensation that you might notice in your body. So common examples of internal triggers are things like uh, having ringing in your ears, noticing increased sensitivity to hot or cold on your teeth, uh, stomach distress, having gas, uh, noticing tingling or numbing in some parts of your body, um, noticing an increase or a decrease in your heart rate, noticing fluctuations in energy level, um, even things like noticing you have more saliva than usual. Sometimes you might notice new or unusual symptoms for you, things like a rash that you've never had before or headaches if you're not used to having headaches. You may notice that one of your eyelids tends to twitch or flutter and wonder what's going on with that. But you might be wondering, what, where do these internal triggers come from? Uh, what's causing them? What, why am I having these internal sensations or these internal triggers? The funny thing about our bodies is that they're constantly changing in a process called homeostasis. Our bodies are constantly adjusting depending on environmental factors. And so things like heart rate, for example, can be affected by outside temperature changes, which we generally aren't really paying attention to. So a person might notice a change in heart rate that was caused by it being warmer outside, but they don't really register or the connect the two. The other thing is that our bodies are sometimes a lot like old cars. They get weird creaking noises or aches or funny sensations that come and go, but generally speaking, we're able to function fine and those physical sensations don't mean anything's necessarily wrong. But imagine for someone with health anxiety, they start to notice some of these internal triggers and these internal triggers can then in ignite that dormant underlying predisposition to worry and worry about health and then kaboom, the health anxiety blows up. Now, aside from physical sensations going on in your body, there are a number of external factors or external triggers that can get this health anxiety ball rolling. Uh, this can be things like hearing about a coworker or an acquaintance who's been recently diagnosed with a serious illness. You can be hearing about health scares in the news, various illnesses or diseases that are spreading in the community. It can be coming into contact with someone who's not feeling well and then starting to worry about whether or not you might have caught something from them. Health anxiety can sometimes be triggered by having an upcoming medical appointment. Maybe it's been a while since you've seen your doctor and they want you to come in or have some sort of diagnostic test and this can trigger a lot of anxiety about what if there's something wrong. And if you get those medical test results and the results come back inconclusive, which can be pretty common with a lot of diagnostic tests, this inconclusivity can also then trigger high levels of anxiety or concern. Even something like traveling overseas or being away from your healthcare system. Uh, if I'm in a different country, I might start worrying about what would happen if I got sick. W would I be able to communicate effectively with the doctors? Would I be able to get appropriate treatment? Would I be able to pay for the treatment? And sometimes these external or internal triggers can work together to make a double whammy trigger for a person with health anxiety. For example, suppose I read a news article about someone who developed throat cancer. And then I start noticing some tenderness in my throat or some unusual sensations when I try to swallow. 
And it leads me to start wondering if maybe there's something wrong with me. So any of these internal or external triggers can start a spiraling collection of what if health thoughts. And once a person who's predisposed to hypochondriasis starts on that what if worry train, it can be really, really difficult to break out of that cycle. And so this is where our model of health anxiety stands at this point. A person has a predisposition to health anxiety based on prior experiences and unrealistic or unhelpful rules or assumptions about their health. That person gets exposed to either internal or external triggers, which then activates those unhelpful rules and assumptions. Things like, I can't be healthy and have any unusual physical symptoms. Uh, if I do have any unusual physical symptoms, I need to know exactly what's causing those symptoms. Otherwise, it must be something bad. If I don't take this seriously, if I don't pay close attention to it, I could miss something and that could lead to a serious Ill illness or disease uh, that could potentially lead to my death. And so the health anxiety stick of dynamite gets lit and explodes. But the thing is, people with hypochondriasis typically don't experience health anxiety as just an, ex an, just an acute explosion of worry about their health that goes away relatively quickly. What usually happens is the health anxiety gets activated, but then there are a series of other factors that maintain the health anxiety and keep it going. And in the next video in this series, I'm going to be talking about a number of these factors that tend to maintain health anxiety and keep that health anxiety fire burning, even after the initial trigger may no longer be present. So please keep an eye out for that video in the coming weeks. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about health anxiety, I'd encourage you to check out this video. So that's all for today's video. As always, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video, and I'll see you in the next one.